I could never understand why so many people I know want to escape the cold season. I love watching nature as it changes its dress and observing how everything else changes as well. Light turns to darkness, warmth to cold. Darkness becomes light and cold becomes warmth. Once again. An ever-repeating cycle. Every time of the year has its own special meaning, inviting us to align with the heartbeat of nature. And I never understood why someone would not want to observe this spectacle. This time of transition in which you can feel how the energies change. For me traveling was never interesting because of the weather. I simply love getting to know other cultures. I love getting to know the flora and fauna in other countries, the wildlife and the stories that were probably told there a very long time ago. And today I was packing for my upcoming trip to Korea, a country that I call my second home, a country that welcomed me nearly a decade ago when I was lost in my life, a country that taught me that I'm free to make decisions that I feel are right for me and to dream big. And I can safely say that Korea was the country that gave me back my smile when I thought I had lost it. Sometimes we just have to leave everything behind and lose ourselves in the world to find ourselves again. Hi magical one, how are you doing? I hope you are doing well and it has been a little while since we had a chat like this and as you can see i'm currently packing for my travel to south korea i'm traveling in a few days and i'm really really excited even though a little bit sad because i will miss the first transition from summer to autumn here in germany but don't worry we are also looking for magic in south korea while we are there but yeah, I thought in this video I'm just sharing with you my witchy travel essentials that I always bring with me when I'm traveling. So maybe this gives you some inspiration to be your most witchy self even while you are traveling. And by the way, if you can hear any noise in the background, I'm so sorry for that. That's my fan running, but it's not possible for me to be in this room with a closed window and a closed door and not have my fan running because it's so hot again in Germany we have another heat wave so that's the humming sound you may hear in the background so sorry but yeah my hair is up again because it's too hot in this room to film without any of these measures that I took but yeah without further ado let me show you what I bring to my travels as a witch and by the way, just one more thing, because when I started to really get into witchcraft and magic, I had this face and I had this belief that I'm not witchy enough or I'm not a good witch in quotes if I don't do a certain amount of things. Like for example, if I don't do X, Y, Z every single day, if I don't do a ritual every single full moon or new moon, I thought I'm not witchy enough or I cannot call myself a witch. And I think this is important for the things that we are talking about in a second because for example, if I started out as a witch, a travel altar was a really big thing and everyone was talking about their travel altar and they were showing their altars that they would bring to their travels and they had all these candles and crystals and herbs and all these kind of things. And I felt really bad and not like, being able to call myself a witch because when I travel I don't bring a lot of things. So for me energetically being the witch is just as normal as brushing my teeth. Like I don't think about what I need to do in order to call myself a witch. I just know deep down from my heart that I'm a witch because it's my way of living, it's my lifestyle. And yeah, if that means that I just bring my necklace that is like really important to me, then that's good for me. And I don't need to bring this huge travel altar to just have an external confirmation that I can call myself a witch, if that makes sense. 
So I personally believe that when it comes to magic and doing the craft, you should feel comfortable. So if being comfortable to you means that you don't want to do any spells or rituals outside of your sacred space, outside of your home, then you don't have to do it. To me, for example, I personally love doing my spells and rituals in my sacred space right here. And I don't really like doing spells or rituals outside. I don't really feel safe being outside. And I also tend to forget things and I don't want to walk two hours to a certain place and then be like, oh no, I forgot this crystal that I really need for this spell. So yeah, you should feel comfortable and safe when doing magic and the craft. So this is the first thing that I want you to consider. Like, is doing magic and spells and rituals outside of your home, outside of your sacred space and in another country even, something that you like, that makes you feel comfortable and that makes you feel safe or is it not giving you a good feeling of some kind? Then don't do it, then it's not the right thing for you and that's totally fine. When I'm traveling, I really just bring the bare minimum of my witchy essentials and there is a few reasons for that. So first of all, I'm really anxious and paranoid when it comes to bringing stuff into an airplane, like for example, bringing certain crystals or herbs or maybe even shells that I like to use in my practice into an airplane because it can get you into trouble. I remember when I was traveling with my family like years and years and years ago to, I think it was Turkey or something like that. And it was written that you are not allowed to bring shells back to your home. The same thing happened in Korea. Like I could read at the airport, you are not allowed to bring any shells from the beach back to your home. And this is stuck with me. So I don't really feel comfortable bringing like the essentials that I use that as I said, sometimes are shells and crystals and things and I don't want them to get me into trouble basically. So another reason why I don't really like to bring a lot of stuff to my travels is I want to be able to relax in my vacation and I'm working so much. I'm doing so many things when I'm at home. I just love working. I just love researching, studying, all that kind of good stuff. But when I'm traveling, I just really want to be able to not do anything. Like, I just want to be able to also receive messages. And I had this happen multiple times that when I'm at vacation, I don't do anything, I can just relax. That's when actually most of the spells and rituals that I did back home were manifesting. So it's like you're making space and allow things to happen. You allow messages to come through to you. And I just found like while I'm sitting at the beach, which is something that I will do in South Korea as well, I will just go to the beach, sit down and like relax and just listen to the ocean waves. That's when all the good messages that I usually cannot hear because I'm too busy, busy, um, come through. So this is something that I always try to embrace. Of course, I will film for you. As I said, we are looking for some magic and soul, but I really want to try to yeah, not do any kind of manifestation. I think anyway, the new moon in Virgo that is happening on the 2nd of September is not the best time to manifest. So I will just get out of manifestation mode and into receiving mode. All right, but now what are my witchy essentials that I love to bring to my travels? And I mean every single travel, like these are the things that you will find me with in every single cafe that I'm going, at home even. I usually also have them around me all the time. And what I love to bring is thread. And what I love about thread and knot magic is that it does not require a lot of space or weight and you can even prepare some spells in advance and release this magic while you are on your travel. And by the way, did you know that knot magic was really popular among the wives of sailors? Because when the sailor had to go on the ship and back in the day, like centuries ago, it was really dangerous to be on a ship on the open ocean. The wife would give their husbands a thread with multiple knots so yeah they could just bring it and release when they thought they needed this knot magic or like the spell and probably it was for like safety reasons all that kind of thing and i just really love that fact and i after i read this could understand why i'm so drawn to knot magic while i'm traveling and i'm going to prepare 
a little thread later that day so I have that with me even though I don't think I will really need it but yeah it's just good to have a little thread with me that I know there is some magic inside. So another witchy travel essential and you probably already guessed it if you have been here for a while is some witchy jewelry and I said this before on this channel but I think that witchy jewelry or like jewelry in general is one of the easiest way to subconsciously remind yourself that you are a witch even while traveling again to me being a witch is a lifestyle so wearing this is just like a external reminder that I'm a witch but you could even put some manifestations, some spells or like charge the jewelry with a spell with a manifestation wish and then be subconsciously reminded. So jewelry is really versatile. I also have a really beautiful neck that is like making a cross with some snowdrops and this is like for example my necklace when I'm out there and I think I need to set my boundaries better or like I will be in a place where I need boundaries. So. Yeah, jewelry is just a really beautiful way to embody that witch that you want to, to charge with some energy or to, yeah, just as I said, give it some property that you need for the day, like setting boundaries or being in a creative mode, which is what Labradorite usually does for me. And also my half moons really remind me that I am a cyclical being, I am attuned to the moon phases, I am aligned to the universal frequencies, even I am that witch on vacation, even though I may be on a jet lag, I am always connected. So yeah, my witchy travel essentials that I will always bring with me and that's basically it when it comes to jewelry. I don't will bring anything else because again, I tend to forget things and I don't want to yeah, have to find all the jewelry that may be flying around my purse or my baggage. So yeah, just, just these three precious little, little things. So my next witchy travel essential is of course my journal and I have been journaling so much recently. I'm so happy about that because I'm the type of girl that starts to journal every single day for like two or three months and then I forget it one time and then I forget it for like four months and then I start again. But with someone who has ADHD and I'm not putting a tag on me here, this is just something that I learned for myself that I, instead of like forcing myself into all these habits that really make me feel bad when I cannot hold them up, I shifted into an intuitive mindset. Like for example, when I feel it's time to journal every single day, I will do that because I can feel it's important right now for like two or three months. And maybe then I did enough work. So that's why I forget the habit of doing it. And I can just embody and embrace everything that I just healed with my journal. So this is just something that worked for me. And I also love doing like lucid dreaming work. I would write down my dreams every single day. I started this again this year and I have been practicing lucid dreaming on and off for I think about three years now. And I just love dream magic. So if you want to have a video about that, let me know in the comments below. But if you try to lucid dream and it does not work, here are three questions for you. Do you meditate? Do you write down your dreams every single morning or at night when you wake up? And do you do the reality checks? But yeah, I feel like having a journal and a magical pen like my amethyst pen right here is really, really good to bring on your travels because it is so versatile. It does not need a lot of space and you can use it, as I said, to write down spells. You can do some inner healing work. You can, I don't know, do the lucid dreaming work, whatever you want to do with your journal. So I think having a journal is a really good witchy essential for every kind of travel. All right, so my last witchy travel essential, and I told you we are working with the bare minimum right here, is my Kindle or maybe a few books if I can decide which one I want to bring. But usually I tend to grab my Kindle because there is basically everything on it that I want to read in the upcoming weeks and months. And it's so light, it's like basically weighing nothing and it is so easy to bring in your bag. And especially in Seoul where there is like a beautiful coffee shop every five meters you want to have a good book 
And if you are a Virgo like me, then you really love to study and do some research you cannot live without. This is like the perfect little friend for you, not sponsored by the way. I just really love being able to have basically all the knowledge of the world in this little book right here. So, or this little device. So this is my last witchy travel essential that will accompany me to Seoul or any other travel essentially. Now what I really love doing while traveling is really trying to harness and utilize my surroundings that are already present where I'm traveling to. So let's say for example you are traveling to a place where there is ocean and sand and I had a friend in Ibiza and she told me whenever she's at the ocean she's basically doing a letting go ritual and she's visualizing this huge energy ball and everything that she wants to let go of is going into that energy ball and while she's sitting at the ocean watching the waves she's just throwing this energy ball into the ocean and while she's watching the waves carrying away the energy ball she now knows that her spell is done or for example you could write down something in the sand and while the waves wash away the writing you know that now it is done and you have let gone of it Maybe you want to manifest something and it feels like it is the right place at the right time. Then you could also write down something with a beautiful shell or a stick that you found there. And while the waves wash away this writing, you can visualize that the waves will bring it to the places where it needs to be heard so that you can manifest that spell, that manifestation. And yeah, again, maybe you could work with a certain leaf or a stick or a place or a shell that you find and really utilize and harness the energy that is present at the place that you are traveling to. And what I also love doing is really researching the places that I'm traveling to and try to really get familiar with the energies. Like for example, if I were to travel to Greek, I would definitely make sure to really get deep into the history of Hecate and her connection to Greek. Maybe even leave a little offering at a crossroads in Greek. So just try to think of ways how you can utilize and harness your surroundings where you are traveling to. And yeah, just use the energies that are present there for your magic. All right, so these were my witchy travel essentials and a few tips how you can make the best out of your travel as a witch. And I really hope it was helpful, it was inspiring in some way. And let me know in the comments down below, what are your witchy travel essentials and what can't be missing on your travels? If you want to watch another video, I will link a new video right here so you can go ahead and watch this. And yeah, we will hang out again next week. So I hope you have a good week, magical one. and. See you then. Bye bye.